Okay, let's work through the algorithm called Newton's method in MATLAB. Now the first thing we're going to need is a function to solve. So I made one up here, right there, 2 minus e to the x. Let's see what this looks like. And there we go. And the, you can see that the uh, horizontal axis, let me make that a little bigger for you. There we go. The horizontal axis is right there. Maybe let's add a line there. We can say line goes from 0 to 2 in the x and 0, 0 in y. Let's pull that back up here. And there's our line. We've got it. We've added a line to the plot. And I'm going to make that big and heavy and black so we can see it easily. Make that two. And while I'm at it here, let's just make this bright blue and also heavy so we can see it. There. So no mystery now about what we're trying to do. And we're going to start with x0 being right there, x0 equals 0. So I'm going to say hold on because we're going to start adding some stuff to the plot here. Well, we have f of x. We, we need the derivative. Well, d of f, I'll call it df, derivative of f with respect to x, is just negative e to the x. So we have that as well. Now, what we need to do is figure out how to uh, update our estimate of x. Now, I wrote this out on the board. You can see it right here. We're going to approximate our function f of x with a one-term Taylor series approximation. That is a Taylor series approximation that only has x to the 1. It doesn't have x to the 2 in it. Because of that, we need only the first derivative. You can see I've got it written out here where f of x is approximately that first uh, one-term Taylor series expansion. And I've set it all equal to zero because what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to figure out where that one-term estimate of the function crosses the x-axis. Now, it's not going to be the same as for the actual nonlinear function, but as we iterate, it'll get closer. I've solved for where that straight line is crosses the axis and solve for x. That x will be our new estimate of the root. Now I'm calling it an estimate because that's what it is. We're not solving exactly. So no matter how many decimal points we've got, it's still an estimate. Now it might be a really good estimate, but it's an estimate. So that last line there is what we're going to implement now in MATLAB. x0 equals 0. That's our, that's our initial guess. Okay, so we've got everything set up here. Now x1, I have to type all this out now, it's going to be x0 times df of x0 minus f of x0, oops, 0, that whole thing divided by df of x0. So on the left is going to be my new estimate of the root location of the root x1 and all the stuff on the right is just what happens when I solve uh, that one term Taylor series expansion and now I've got one well does that make sense yeah the slope is minus one and I'm starting at zero and that makes sense so just for to check here what is that minus 0.7183 that means I've crossed uh, the x-axis. I'm actually past the root now. So since I have these, let's do this. Let's plot x1, f of x1, and let's make that a blue circle. Let's see what, make sure it's on our plot. It's right there. It's kind of hard to see. I'm going to make that bigger. And let's see, marker size, let's make that about 12. Let's make sure we can see that. And line width, let's make that 2. There we go. So we started up here. There's our first estimate. Well, how good is it? Eh, not great. 
You know, it's a start, but not much more than that. Well, let's try this now. Where I had x1, let's index everything. There's x2, there's x1, there's x1. Okay, now you're, if you're thinking loop right now, you're right on the money. That's exactly what we would do if we wrote this out as an M file. So let's do this. Okay, x2 is 0.7358. Well, what's f of x2? Ooh, look at that. There's a 0.0, .0 something. Now it's negative, so I'm still on the right to the right hand side of the root, but that's okay. I'm a lot closer. So let's just index this as well and pull this up. I'll clean this up here as well, just like I did before. Make that 2, make that 12. There. Now you can see, well, actually, I probably should have put my initial guess up there, shouldn't I? And same thing. Now I could uh, increase the line width and the marker size and everything in the plot command if I wanted to. So first estimate was terrible. Second estimate, eh, a little less terrible. Third estimate, now we're getting close here. By the way, what is the right answer? Well, we have everything we need to know. So the right answer is 0 0.6931, okay? That's for coming from the F0 command. We've got X0, X1, X2 for increasingly accurate estimates. Well, let's just do this one more time. X3, just, I'm, all I'm doing is I'm indexing all the counters by one. Look at that, 6940. So I'm, I'm quite close now. Uh, next estimate on that plot. Let's make that F3 and that. Let's see where we are here. Ooh, look at that. We're close now. Turn that off. I'm actually having to zoom in to find it. This is good news. Look at that. You can hardly see it now because it's been uh, hidden by the intersection of the function and the axis. That's real good news. So there it is. We're, we're awfully close. I'm going to zoom out here. Well, do you want to do one more? Let's do one more. It's been working so well. Let's do one more estimate here. One more update using Newton's method. Wow, well, look at that, 6931. So we agree with F0 to within four decimal places. My guess is that's probably good enough, certainly for our purposes here. And we're gonna have a hard time even seeing this. We're really gonna to have to zoom in. So look how far I'm having to zoom in to see, to even see that updated point. There it is right there. There we go. Now let me turn that off and I'm going to zoom back out here and give you an idea of how close that really is on any reasonable scale. You can see those two circles just about overlap one another. So any good algorithm can estimate the error and we can use that to form an exit criteria. Well, what is f of x4? Okay, that's minus eight times 10 to the minus seven. Well, that means we're awfully close to the root. Maybe if we said f of x had, the absolute value of f of x has to be less than maybe one over 10,000, that would be a good exit criteria. Another one could be, what's the difference between successive values of x? Well, what's x4 minus x3? Okay, it's eight, nine times 10 to the minus four, also very small. So we could make the absolute value of that some real small number and call that an exit criteria. So we've been able to 
estimate the root, the method clearly converges on an answer, and it's the right answer. And we also have a very good way of describing numerically how close we are to the root. This is Newton's method has been around, well, since Newton pretty much. It's actually often called the Newton-Raphson method because of some improvements to it. And uh, it's one of the real workhorses of the, the numerical uh, methods world. It gets used an awful lot, and it's easy to see why. So that's an algorithm. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.